as we watch the continuing um, debacle in Afghanistan, the uh, images of um, people jumping, being thrown out of airplanes, the airlift, uh, as we watch the jubilant Taliban moving into the presidential palace, um, drinking tea, uh, laughing victoriously. Uh, and then, of course, um, the inevitable chance of death to America. Here is uh, CNN, by the way, taking note of this and commenting on it. Listen. They're just chanting death to America, but they seem friendly at the same time. <laughs> yeah, they're, they seem really nice. Uh, they want to kill us, but they, you know, they're smiling while they say it. And this is CNN. Uh, now, I'll comment on the media coverage of all this another time, but here I want to focus on the death to America. Where have we heard that before? Well, the first time I really heard it was during the hostage crisis. Remember uh, Jimmy Carter? Remember the hostages in Iran? Uh, remember that feeling of kind of helplessness and um, indignation and rage that you felt uh, in which this superpower, America, is just being humiliated day after day after day? Well, those days are here again, which is another way of saying that with Joe Biden, at least in the area of foreign policy, also in some other areas, inflation and so on, but I'm focusing on foreign policy here because it's the most meaningful we have uh, Joe Biden playing the role of Jimmy Carter. And think about, you know, some of you may be too young to remember Carter, but the older ones among us will remember him. I mean, you're in the face of tragedy, sheer idiocy. You know, here's a guy talking about the fact he was really surprised that the Soviets invaded Afghanistan. He was really surprised that when he pulled American support for the Shah, we got Khomeini. Um, and so you got the feeling that you're dealing with an insular buffoon who does not even belong on the world stage. And the idea that he's leading um, the uh, United States is a, is a global embarrassment. Well, the same thing is going on with Biden. You've got this hobbling retard. And there he is, mumbling and bumbling, and he makes a short speech and runs away to his basement. He takes no questions. Um, and the whole world is looking at this and going, this is what America has put in front? This is their commander in chief? In a way, America's performance in Afghanistan, those scenes that you're seeing out of Kabul, mirror um, Biden himself, a kind of uh, guy who looks like he's just ready to fall down or keel over. Now, this isn't just a matter, though, of, of Biden, uh, Biden's persona. Here's a... Um, Here's the uh, way that the U.S. Embassy in Kabul puts out an alert. We are assisting U.S. citizens with their departure from Afghanistan. How? Well, it turns out it says, please do not, all caps, come to the airport until notified by the embassy. Yeah, so if you need to, if your life is in danger, you want to run to the airport, don't do it. Wait till you're notified by the embassy. How do you get notified by the embassy? Well, if you would like to register, if you would like to register, you don't have to register, but if you'd like, if you'd like to register, follow this link. So I click the link and basically what it says is, it's like the DMV. It goes, here's a form that you can fill out and send it in. And then if we want, we'll e email. So don't contact us, we'll contact you. Fill out the form and and sit tight. Now, can you imagine the feeling of abandonment? And here we're talking about the abandonment of Americans as well as Afghan allies that we have for 20 years built up. We've told we're with you. We're going to stick by you. This is our fight too. We're going to do this together. And now, mm, we're out of here. You're on your own. I don't know if you've seen those images on social media, very disturbing of bodies in the street. Now, the other thing that happens is when you have a disaster of this kind, we saw this with Vietnam, in some ways we saw it with Iran, the vultures kind of move in. And the vultures not only take advantage strategically, I've talked about how China's building this, already kind of started building this massive railway line from China. They wanted to go through Afghanistan to Pakistan. So that's all going on. But, but notice the ridicule that's coming out of the Chinese media. This really shows what they think of the United States. There's not even an iota of respect. First of all, the Chinese state media organ mocks the U.S. withdrawal, quote, saying it was that the takeover of Kabul was, quote, 
more smooth than the presidential transition in the US. So you can see here, basically a chuckling Chinese, <laughs> you know, the, these, this, this was a more peaceful transition of power. And to some degree, I'd have to say it's probably true. Then they say uh, that the, uh, the, the lesson of Afghanistan is the United States cannot be trusted, cannot be trusted as an ally. Wow. I don't even know who could disagree here, but what they're basically saying is, quote, Afghanistan has been abandoned by the United States. It's, quote, dealt a heavy blow to the credibility and reliability of the United States. And then, of course, the final and I think the more crushing um, um, insinuation, and I'm going to quote now. This is from the Chinese state-owned media, by the way. From what has happened in Afghanistan, Taiwan should perceive that once a war breaks out in the Taiwan-China Strait, the island's defense will collapse in hours, and the U.S. military won't come to help. I think they're thinking specifically here of Biden. As a result, the Taiwanese authorities will quickly surrender, while some high-level officials may flee by plane. So here's China very directly drawing the lesson, and in a sense saying, you know, our war planners need to move, um, move up their schedules because we're dealing with a lame, pathetic United States that runs away. I mean, can't beat a bunch of Afghan tribesmen, can't train an army over 20 years. Uh, it's a joke. And so what, what do you think is going to happen if the Chinese take Taiwan? Is What's the Biden administration going to do? A strongly worded letter? Um, uh, mobilize the uh, indignation of the international community? You begin to see how these kinds of things have far-reaching implications. What Carter did in the 70s um, had far-reaching implications that Reagan partly undid. But hey, the Iranian revolution is still with us a uh, half century later. Similarly, this disastrous defeat in Afghanistan, pioneered by Biden, it's not just a matter of should we get out, it's how we get out. And we've responded to this in Carter-like fashion, with Carter-like ineptitude and nincompoopery. And we'll be living, I think, with the painful consequences for a long time to come.